Are you looking for a few cards to finish up that new brew? Well, you can pick them up and support the show by visiting our sponsor, Card Kingdom. Just follow the link in the description box down below. Hello and welcome to Babelfish, a social battle series focusing on the personal stories from our amazing magic community and featuring a unique challenge format for each episode. Joining us today is Joe Dyer, writer of Vintage 101 right here on MTG Goldfish. Today we'll discuss the basics of vintage, player resources, and practice playing everyone's favorite, Karn Shops. So Joe Dyer, oh my God, thank you so much for joining me on episode two of Babelfish, where we get to talk about anything magic with really cool guests like yourself. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure to have you, sir. I know we're tapping into the uh, the, the Goldfish crew here a little bit, but um, I've really enjoyed what you write for Vintage 101, and I thought we could uh, talk a little bit about the series that you write, the um, games you like to play, and have you teach me a little bit of uh, how to get started with a specific vintage deck. Sure, that'd be great. So Joe, as a format, what aspects of vintage do you find so appealing? See, I like Vintage because there's a lot of variance to the format. Uh, it's a very high-powered format. Uh, it's a format where you can do a lot of really broken things, uh, as players like to do broken things in formats, and uh, as we can, as evidenced by you know formats like Modern, where players are trying to just race to do the broken, most broken thing that they can do. Uh, that's kind of like Vintage. Uh, it's it's fun to play very high-powered games with very high-powered cards. Uh, it's also a lot of fun to play with cards like the Power Nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, those cards are really a lot of fun to play with. Uh, as as somebody who's cast Ancestral Recall a bunch of times, uh, casting Ancestral Recall is probably one of the best feelings in playing Magic. Paying one blue for three cards is way, way, way amazing. So, what is the difference between Legacy and Vintage? So, Vintage includes is is like Legacy in that it includes every legal card set in the game. Uh, however, uh, in terms of vintage, uh, there is a banned list and there is a restricted list. And uh, cards are not banned uh, in vintage for power level reasons. Uh, the only cards that are banned in vintage are cards that deal with uh, the word anti. Okay. Uh, or cards that have dexterity usage to them, like Chaos Orb and Falling Star. Okay. Uh, or like conspiracies or games that ref- or cards that look to refer to. Um, mini games like Shahrazad. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so so everything else in vintage that is power level wise is restricted for power level reasons, meaning that you can only have one copy of that card in your deck. Uh, so the, obviously the most powerful restricted cards that exist in the format are the power nine. Uh, those are going to be your big hitters, but then there are other cards that have been restricted for various reasons, such as, Treasure Cruise, for example, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Dig Through Time. Uh, those are two big spells that are played commonly in the format uh, that are restricted. Uh, cards like Monastery Mentor. Uh, oh, that's restricted? Few, yeah, it's one of the few creatures that okay. has been restricted uh, because uh, the, the meta game during when Monastery Mentor was fully legal as a four of uh, was probably one of the worst vintage meta games that's ever existed uh because monastery mentor it was such a bad card to play against when you could play four of them so how often do you see um change in the vintage format the past couple years have been a very interesting set of years for vintage uh there's been uh cards from era to era that have made big sweeping changes in the format mm-hmm. obviously uh dig through time and treasure cruise were like the biggest ones uh and of course those cards both had to be restricted they were restricted i think within three months of each other i want to say uh because treasure cruise went first and then they tried letting dig exist by itself they realized dig was not healthy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. at all uh and then uh, monastery mentor came around and was around for a while uh but it was 2017 uh, when they decided to restrict Monastery Mentor. But um, it was Kaladesh and Aether Revolt that really kind of boosted some of Vintage a little bit from the colorless side of things uh, with the additions of uh, Foundry Inspector and uh, uh, Walking Ballista. Mm-hmm. Uh, those two cards uh, helped reinforce what uh, shops, workshop decks became 
after they lost a lot of their uh, their taxing effects. Like they they got things like Chalice of the Void restricted, uh, Lodestone Golem was restricted, Thorn of Amethyst was restricted, uh, Trinisphere was restricted. Uh, they tried all these ways to cut down the workshop decks because with all those tax effects, they were too powerful. So what became Ravager Shops is what we now call it. Uh, it was what happened when Foundry Inspector and Walking Ballista were added to the format where it became more of a low-to-the-ground aggro deck using cards like Arcbound Ravager and like Hangerback Walker, Walking Ballista, Phyrexian Revoker, Steel Overseer. It became more closer to like modern affinity uh, than it did a, a classic control workshop deck. Well, what I think is interesting is that um, you know, all, all the cards you're, you're naming, whenever there's a problem, there isn't any, any specific card that's outright banned, right? Everything is just, at the worst, restricted. Restricted, yeah. And so now... With War of the Spark and Modern Horizons, uh, those two sets have created such a, a weird imbalance to the format now because War of the Spark introduced these Planeswalkers that have these static abilities uh, that are like enchantments that are much difficult to interact with, but they also generate value on their own just by their abilities and their statics. Uh, so primarily the two big ones that the format has devolved into is uh, decks that play Karn the Great Creator uh, and decks that play Narset uh, Parter of Veils. But Modern Horizons, most interestingly enough, weirdly rebalanced the format <laughs> because okay. it introduced the card Force of Vigor, which is the uh, green pitch spell. You can, uh, If it's not your turn, you can exile a green card from your hand Instead of uh, casting Force of Vickers mana cost, and it allows you to destroy up to two artifacts or enchantments. And this is really powerful. Uh, in fact, we've seen decks that are running four of these across the entire 75 because it's really, really good against the shops decks. Being able to like turn off their combo uh, with a pitch spell is really, really, really strong. Well, what's it like for you to be a longtime vintage player and then see this much? Uh, shake up in the in the format it's interesting uh i think that modern horizons especially was definitely necessary i think that uh, a card like force of vigor was a really good idea for the format mm -hmm. uh i don't think that karn and narset were such good ideas okay uh so i'm kind of glad that after seeing the spoilers for core 2020 that there's not much that seems insane or unbalancing for the format all right that's enough chit-chat. Joe, let's get down to brass tacks. What deck should I be sleeving up for my first foray into vintage? Uh, so there are a number of different things you can do. Uh, a lot of the workshop-based decks are pretty easy to pick up. Uh, the most common of that now being the Karn Chops decks uh, are pretty easy to pick up. Uh, a lot of like the Xerox decks are pretty easy to pick up. Uh, but, uh, also dredge is also really easy to kind of pick up. Uh, however, if you're not used to playing dredge, that can be kind of confusing, uh, mm -hmm. as you're not really playing a lot of real magic when you're playing dredge. Uh, so like the workshop decks are probably the easiest to just get in. And generally the power level of the deck will kind of handle you a little bit through most games, uh, to where you can start learning basic sequencing and that sort of thing. Okay. So it's a pretty straightforward deck, and then I think uh, if I look quickly at the Goldfish meta page, it looks like it's one of the top it's top top two for most common uh, decks that are, that are being played. Yeah, Karn Shops has pretty been around pretty while pretty pretty while since Karn the Great Creator uh, came about, uh, and so it's just one of those decks uh, kind of evolved uh, around Karn really. Uh, this is a little bit different than a lot, some of the traditional Ravager Shops decks. Uh, Ravager Shops can be really good for people that are uh, used to playing decks like Modern Affinity. Mm -hmm. So if you really like Modern Affinity, Ravager Shops can be really good for you because it's a lot of the similar uh, math skills uh, involved in determining how counters for like Ravager and that sort of thing. Uh, but this deck is a little bit more focused on uh, getting to the combination of Time Vault and Voltaic Key. Okay. Uh, and so the way that works is uh, Time Vault enters the battlefield tapped, uh, but in order to untap it, normally you would have to 
skip your next turn and then you can uh, untap it and then be able to tap it to take an extra turn. Well, Voltaic Key lets you pay a mana to untap an artifact so that you can tap Time Vault to take an extra turn. And then you can just kind of keep doing this until you find a way to win the game. Well, this looks like a fun deck to play, Joe. So I appreciate the recommendation. I see a lot of one ofs, which fits the vintage flavor quite well. <laughs> in lots of ways. Yeah, to a lot of restricted cards. Yeah, totally. So that sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. But Joe, I want to know what you brought to play today. Uh, so one of the decks I've got is a bug mid-range deck. Uh, and so by bug, I mean uh, basically Sultai, uh, blue, black, green uh, base. Uh, and it's more of a Xerox-based uh, mid-range style deck. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you remember well from the days of Deathrite Shaman and Legacy, uh, it's a Deathrite Shaman deck. Uh, it's also playing cards like Tarmogoyf. Uh, it's also playing cards like Snapcaster Mage. Uh, but then it's also playing all of the cards that are really good in blue decks in the format that are restricted, like Dig Through Time, Treasure Cruise, uh, Ancestral Recall. Uh, and then also uh, across the full 75, uh, Force of Vigor uh, okay. in the deck. So nice. uh, it's one of those uh, things where it can play Force. It has supports enough green cards to be able to play Force of Vigor. Well, it sounds uh, almost like a um, like a blue Jund deck or like a blue rock deck, where it's just basically, like all, yeah. all good stuff. Yeah, and it has a lot of similar removal a modern players would be used to knowing about like essence trophy mm -hmm. uh that's a pretty common card uh in the bug lists uh i am playing a copy of like dark confidant and then the other one card i'm, I'm playing around with uh now in this list uh is a uh, mana gorger hydra okay uh which is a, a three cmc card that gets a plus one plus one counter every time a player casts a spell any player any player yeah and it also has trample and I understand this is like your new kind of favorite deck, right? This uh, bug list? For right, right now, yeah. I change decks every so often just to kind of keep thinking about the format. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a traditionally uh, Ravager Shops player uh, at heart, uh, as well as Dredge. So uh, I do also play Ravager Shops from time to time. Well, hey, how about we hop into uh, some MTGO and we kind of see how these, uh, how, these, how these decks work out? All right. Joe, uh -huh. is there any reason why I wouldn't want to be going first here? No, there's never there's never a chance why you wouldn't. Uh, winning the die roll and being on the play is pretty important. Uh, now, most of the time, uh, like shop space decks, your opening hand composition is going to be the most important decision that you're going to make. Okay. Uh, so you want to look for hands that include uh, a generally a turn one or a turn two play. And you don't want to just want to play like some artifact mana and pass turn. So this hand looks pretty good as far as having a turn one impact. So I think this is a good a good start. So if I play, well, first of all, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep as well. Okay. This is pretty good. Oh, okay. Well, I guess mine's pretty good too, though. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Same. So I got a workshop, and I can go into transfer. Ooh, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um. I guess you could force yeah. a will, possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna force a will that. Okay, fine. Uh, I'm gonna pitch Dick through time because I hate pitching restricted cards, but uh, it's a little awkward to uh, deal with Trennis here. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Here. All right. Let's see here. What do I have here? Uh, I want to play this Mox Jet. Mm-hmm. And I'll play this Tropical Island. I'll we'll run out this Tarmogoyf. Nice. Say two three. Just a two three. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. I remember you saying, you know, people think that vintage is a fast format, but that's not necessarily the case. No. And there are decks that certainly, obviously, with any format this old, uh -huh. uh, you, you can obviously run into decks that will can kill you, you know, or end the game definitively turn one, turn two. But uh, there are cards like Force of Will that make those games, you know, not happen. Right. So, well, like, and not for only that. Now, I mean, you're 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 down to three cards already. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna heed your advice and not play my land first. I'm first gonna play the rest of my cards. So I'm gonna tap the workshop for three. Yep. Play a mana vault. Dull. Now I have two options here. What I want to work toward is playing wasteland, tap mana vault, and play Karn, right? But that leaves me with two additional mana to cast. A Phyrexian Revoker. However, I have like no clue what I'd want to 
name for Revoker. So in this case, you've seen a card like Tarmogoyf. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can reasonably assume uh, that I'm not playing a card like Dakfaden. Okay. Uh, Dakfaden is probably one of those cards that's like the biggest threat to uh, a workshop space deck. Uh, just simply because you play Dakfaden, you can steal their best thing. Since Phyrexian Revoker can uh, name uh, any car- any non land card, it's it's really hard to say. Uh, in this case, uh, Deathrite Shaman is also a really good name, uh, just because uh, if you see Tarmograph Bug Deck, you can assume that there's something like uh, a Deathrite Shaman in the deck. Okay, so that's a pretty decent name. Just a good yeah, and I think at this point, if I'm trying to cut you off mana with yeah. Wastelanding next turn, then that's probably a good good one to go into. Right. All right, so we will go for that. Yeah. And we'll say Death Right Shaman. And then yep. we will play our land for the turn, which is the Wasteland <laughs> I talked about. Tap the Mana Vault for three, plus the Wasteland, and throw a Karn. And then I, I'm feeling like I don't want to minus right away. I kind of want a plus. Yeah, that's probably correct. Uh, minusing him just puts you in a position where I know you've got something and I have to have an answer for it. Okay. Uh, you could also kill kill my mox jet with it. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Ah, so that's an interesting trick for all the zero CMC. Yep. And that's something where, like, you know, as a new player, you wouldn't really think think of doing that. So um, the flavor of that is that uh, Karn the Great Creator uh, was based a lot on an original incarnation of Karn in the game called Karn Silver Golem. Okay. Uh, which had a similar ability. You paid one, and you turned any non-creature artifact into a creature. So that's cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, so I think what I'm going to do here, I'm going to Wasteland you first. Yeah. And get rid of probably. your Underground Sea. And then I got two choices here. I can either go searching with Karn for like a Worm Coil, because I have another Mishra Shop in my hand. So I think I'm going to go for a Worm Coil engine. That way you can keep blocking the, uh, blocking the Goyf. And then play another Workshop, and then... Play yep. Worm Coil's pretty good. Worm Coil. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then pass the turn. Um, yeah. I got nothing. All right, we're going to... I'll let you go through yield. the motions of, of, of killing me. <laughs> All right, we take one from the... Take one from the Mana Vault. So we can just be super, super mean and play Crucible of Worlds. Yeah, I, I can't beat the the wasteland, if it, if it wasteland <laughs> crucible <setup>. world. <laughs> yeah, so I think this is a pretty good lock. So we will then go on the attack. As you you can see, just like how powerful these workshop based decks are, uh, I I'm gonna go ahead and concede. Okay. Uh, this is the this is very clearly, obviously a a game that I'm not gonna win. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to keep in this game. Uh, this is not terrible. <laughs> okay. I guess I will also keep. All right. So I'm going to play a polluted Delta and I'm going to pass turn. Okay. Uh, untap and draw and see what we get here. Ooh, excellent. Oh, what can we do? So we're going to lead on a Mishra's workshop. Yep. Tap that for three. Play a soul ring. Soul Ring's fine. Soul Ring's fine. Yeah. Play a Phyrexian Revoker for two. Is that still okay? That's also fine. This is not land card. We're good. So I guess I could go Death Right Shaman again if that's boring. Uh, I could that's to... probably the best thing to name in this it's matchup. Kind of, it's kind of like naming birds, basically. Yeah. All right, we're going to try to tap two and go for a Sphere of Resistance. All right, so I'm going to fetch a response. Okay. Get underground C. I feel like we're going to get counterspelled here. And cast a ceremonious protection. Aha. And that's, a, I, I'm assuming, a sideboard card you brought in. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. We're going we're gonna to pass. All right. So let's see here. What do I got here? feel like... A crack in the tomb. Yeah, I'll crack a catacomb. Let's go get a tropical. Cool. You got five cards. And we're going to DT. Okay. Get whatever you want, sir. Yep. 
That's card. just a good quality black card right there. Yep. Demonic Tutor, or as we call it, DT. <laughs> you hear that word a lot. Uh, that that uh, shortening of that a lot. A lot of Finnish players will say DT for this or DT for that. And... All right, so, so you passed. You didn't do anything. You got five cards. I drew another card, and I guess we'll go to attacks first. Just to swing in sure. for two. Not that I think you care that much about taking two damage. No, nope. life totals are life totals. <laughs> as long as I'm not zero. <laughs> All right, so second main phase. Um, we got two artifacts on the battlefield. So I sense a Tolarian Academy. Oh, you do? Uh, yes, you're correct. <laughs> correct. So I can either Wasteland or I can Tolarian Academy. This is the decision tree part yep, that you're talking yep. about. Lots of little decision trees in this format that uh, make up a lot of difference mm -hmm. as to what's going to happen in the future turns. I'm going to go Wasteland just because I already have another one in hand, and I think I can just stall you enough to, uh, to have, it, have it be worthwhile. Sure. Yep, that's fine. Yeah, and then we'll just uh, play another Revoker. Plus, that'll make my, my academy more important uh, next turn. Um, let's see you could just also name Lot Lotus, like There's you said. Black Lotus. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think you probably would have already played that, but maybe you're hanging on to it. All right. So I have something to do at end step here. Yep. Uh-oh. We're going to force bigger. Mm. Aw. And then we're going to wasteland your... Mistress Workshop. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Regretting that decision already. <laughs> well, we're both on three cards. Okay. That makes the the Academy a lot worse, so. I wonder, I think I'm just going to keep. Yeah, the keep Wasteland train. Attrition going and then try to ride the Revoker for as much damage as possible. <laughs> All right, we're going to try to do Grim Monolith? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. But you saying that's fine, I'm assuming you have something in your hand to... To say it's not fine. I had to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pass, pass, sure. pass. Four cards. You get to gain yeah, a life. You're going to gain a life off of Inventus, right? Nice. Nice. All right, going to go to combat and swing in for two. Yep. All right, second main phase. We got three artifacts. Tap that for three. Try and play a Sphere of Resistance. Yeah, we're going to force well that one. All right, fine. Cool, and then with the other mana, we'll just untap, uh, untap the Grim Monolith. And we'll go for, for four mana, crack the Inventor's Fear, find another Sphere of Resistance, and then play that out. Yep, got it. Cool, and then F6. All right. Why not? <laughs> I will continue to not draw lands. Ah. Yay, fetch lands. Not having them. All right, attack for two. Come on, Revoker. All right. Academy for four. Use two for a Grim Monolith. Oh, three yeah. for a Grim Monolith. Sorry. Yep. Uh, and then we'll just untap the Grim Monolith. And I do have Karn in my hand, but that's not that's not useful, so I just pass. Yep. <laughs> Unless she... <sighs> yeah, I can, I can definitely see how Force, Force of Vigor is awesome. Yeah. Uh, it would have been good if you had not had that second revoker. Mm -hmm. Oh, attack for two. Nice. I just drew a chalice. The most common thing to chalice would be zero, yeah. one, or two. Usually, usually zero, one, or two. Zero, one, or two. Just depends on what you think I might draw. Well, so I think I'm going to go yeah. ahead and drop it down for two. That way you don't play a two mana creature. Oh, man, I couldn't play a two mana creature if I uh, drew one, so. <laughs> yep. I, I drew mono force of wills. Ah! So. Uh, this sure hand, this hand looks fine. I think I understand that you just keep anything that gives you lots of mana and stuff to play. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> pretty much the blue decks. Or pretty much those decks. Um, ugh. This hand's worse. I guess we gotta go to yeah, five cards is fine. Uh well I don't know, maybe I should have mulliganed this. This is this is okay, but it's like a it's like a do nothing hand. Like there's there there isn't a threat. But I do have a shop, and I can play a soul ring. 
with it. Yep. And then I can play a key with the mana. Yeah. And then I can also play another key with the mana. Oh. And then I can tap for two and then untap the soul ring. Yeah. And then not really play anything fun other than a, th a thorn of amethyst. Force of will. Oh, oh come on. Yeah. Guy, this is a very yeah, common they, thing to happen to have happen, huh? Thor, Thorn is not what I like to see. Ah, uh, well, I'm gonna untap my soul ring then. Yeah. But yeah, I think I probably should have shipped this hand because I don't really have anything else to do. Well, I mean, I don't really have much else to do either. So, uh, whoops. Deathrite Shaman. Yep. Without a fetch land. Yay. Oh, uh, come on, draw something awesome. Okay. Hmm. Wasteland. Mm. <laughs> oh, Wasteland versus Deathrite Shaman is always great. Deathrite, Deathrite is actually May is one of the reasons why it got banned in Legacy is it was making Wasteland pretty much unplayable. Oh, really? Yeah, I That's mean it was it was so good uh, at negating the effects of a Wasteland that uh, people were playing Blood Moon in their decks playing Deathrite Shaman because it was that good. <laughs> huh. Well, I got a Chalice of the Void. <laughs> and I think I'm gonna chalice on two again. It's kind of like my jam. I mean, that's not bad. And I do kind of wanna, I do kind of wanna wasteland you, but maybe we'll wait and see what you play. If you play another land or not, then maybe we'll do it. So I'll pass the turn. Yep, that was a pretty good chalice. Chalice on two is a good good choice. Yep. All right, you're gonna pass. I don't think I'm gonna bother to wasteland you then, right? Because that's like no point. Ugh. Oh, I drew another wasteland. <laughs> <laughs> we now I kind of want to wasteland you, but I'm gonna wait till see. I'm gonna see if you play another land or like a black source or something. I mean, death right's a black source. Yeah. Well, yes. If you okay, now you got now you have black mana. I was waiting to see if you like had more access to more than just green or blue, which you which you kind of do now. So I think we are gonna wasteland you, so that way sure. you're still sort of on like two mana. Hopefully we draw something. Ah ha ha! Oh no. Can we play a revoker? Oh, I can't pump nope. it! Oh, no, I can't play <laughs> Oops. Uh, when you chalice check yourself. Oh, uh, I definitely, I chalice checked myself. Oh man. Karn, Karn, Karn! Hmm. Oh, that's not bad though. Alright, we're gonna play a workshop. Yep. Tap it for three. And tap the mana vault. And untap the mana vault. Walking ballista. Mm -mm. Lone stone. Load stone golem. Ah. Yeah, that's a card. That's a card. At least it's a good big beater. Yep. And then we will F6 and pass the turn. Okay. This is this is decent. Let's see what you draw. We can do some things, possibly. You got you got three mana. I think you could probably Deathrite shaman me out of the game at this point, right? There's enough cards in here. It's in her sorcery. Yeah. Got what? One, two, three, four. Yeah, close. It's close. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna... Man of all. No, we're not worried about untapping you. Karn. Nope, not Karn. So we're gonna swing in for five. Narset, I don't think I care about Narset, so we're just going to go straight face to try to race here. Yeah, I don't have a... I can't use Narset anymore, obviously. Yeah, and I don't think this deck really draws a whole bunch of cards. It doesn't. No, not at all. All right, pass the turn. Hit your dismember. Cool, down to eight. So two cards, two mana, or three mana possibly with Death Right. Going for three mana, I'm feeling. So you're adding a blue... Everything costs one more. Two mana brainstorm. Yeah. What's your favorite art for brainstorm? Uh, I'm partial to the Ice Age one. Yes, that's a that's a great yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Treasure cruise. Oh yeah, that feels good. Okay. Okay. It's an interesting conundrum we have here. Well, Wait, I got we all my just, eggs on this load. We stone. could just lose to a a top tech Karn now. Ugh, not Karn. Come on, Karn. Karn, where are you, buddy? <laughs> All right, we're going for five to you, sir. And you got three cards, one death right. 
I need two more turns to attack. Um, and I have a dismember, so I could dismember the death right. But that would put me down to four. And I'm wondering if that's a good idea or not. Put me down to four. I think we're going to go for it and just try to really keep you off of casting anything. We're gonna do yeah, it man, now, that's pretty so good. <laughs> me not casting things is pretty good. Yeah, well, is, is there, like, a big, like, resource battle for, for Vintage? Is that... Yeah, I mean, we've been having a pretty good one this game. Cool. Honestly, this has been a pretty back and forth. Yeah, it's well, it's definitely interesting. It's, you know, it your opening hand matters. Oh, time, time walk. walk. All right, we got to see some power, some blue power. I got time no walk. effects. Okay. With Ancestral. Okay. Digging. So you're up to four cards. The good thing is everything's costing two. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm going to top deck Karn, Joe. I feel it. I'm sure you will. I feel it's coming right now. Come on, Karn. Oh, it's not Karn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. But it's still, it's still fine. It's still, it's, it's still, it's still okay. Uh, we're going to Mana Vault. Untap Mana Vault. I could maybe, I don't know if attacking first is correct here or not, but I'm going to uh, not worry about it. Go for five. I mean, if it's walking ballista, you're pretty much winning. Not walking ballista. Sad. It is thought not seer. Ooh. Uh, I guess we'll just play. Let's play an academy for fun. We get eight mana to play thought not seer for for five. We'll take a take yeah. a peek, see what you got, unless you counter it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So I can hit you for five, get you down to two, and then have two creatures to swing in for the remaining damage. So I definitely want to take Tarmogoyf, I think. Yeah. We'll pass. Oh, no, we'll cancel. Whoa. I almost uh, passed through the turn there. Then we go to our attack step and then swing in for five. Attack for five. Down to two. All right. Yep. Preordain. I can't, I can't beat the both of those. Well, that's a good game. It's definitely back and forth. Jet, jet, underground sea, dark confidant. Nice, nice play. Love me some dark confidant. Oh, he's so good. Card is very powerful. All right, we're gonna draw the card we put away. You got four cards in hand. We can workshop into grim monolith. Yep. Into voltaic key. <laughs> Pretty good. Keys have been good to me so far. Yeah, that's why the deck plays them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go for three, untap the Grim Monolith. We have access to five mana. So I think we can play another key. Gross. And then tap for three. And then untap the Grim Monolith. Yeah. Now we have access to six mana. And six is good because we can play... You don't play days, right? <laughs> Do people play days? Is that like a... Uh, no, not typically days is not a thing. Okay, so that shouldn't be something... Like, basically, you need to be worried about Force of Will, which you can't really do anything about. Right. All right, so we're going to go for, uh, I guess, a Phyrexian Revoker for two. Yeah, Revoker's fine. And then we'll name Mox Jet. Sure. And I, b by the tone of your voice, Joe, I'm assuming you have a Force of Will in hand because every single game... You've had a force of will in hand. So I don't think Karn's going to hit the battlefield here. You would be correct. You'd be correct. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, I think your Dark Confidant is going to be a little bit better than my Phyrexian Revoker here. But we'll, yeah. we'll find out. Uh, usually he, he's pretty good. All right, we're going to yield to that effect. Man, a Gorger Hydra. Boom. Ah! That's an M19 card. Yeah. Sees a lot of play now. Nice. Well, especially, yeah, I guess if you have all the colorless yeah. decks running around. Strip your workshop. Oh, strip my, oh I feel like I'm going to get beat pretty hard here. Get in there with this. Now, Infernal Reckoning, is that that's another sideboard card, is my yeah. guess, right? You probably yeah. brought in um, the blue counter spell along with the Infernal Reckoning. Yeah. So how many do you play in your sideboard? Two. 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 Is it two and two? Yeah, and then I also play the extra two Force of Vigor in the sideboard. Okay. How much diversifying do you need to do for your sideboarding? 
Uh, it depends. Uh, a lot of decks are pretty good. Uh, a lot of cyborg cards are very good against multiple matchups. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm gonna just keep drawing these mana gorge hydras. Oh my gosh! Nice. All right, you going after Karn? Yep, down to one counter. Yeah, except puts him to one counter. Yeah, so now I cannot search. That's the idea. That is totally the idea. Uh oh. Oh, Karn. Well, I think I think that is gonna put me out of it because I can't do much else. And I can make one blocker, but <laughs> that's about that's about it. Make your dude a one one. Yeah. Every player casts a spell, put a plus one plus one counter. Yeah, I don't yeah that's the great anything. thing about Mana Gorge Hydra is it's it gets really big really fast. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think I'm just gonna concede because I, I screwed that up. Alright, so we're gonna draw. Alright, library. The question is, you're gonna are you gonna put cards back or take damage? Uh, I'm a ah. fan of taking taking damage. Take the damage with uh, strip mine. I'm yeah. always a fan of taking damage with um with the card. It's so wild to, to think about it, but uh, I always do. Okay, let's see. Oh no, treasure cruise. Treasure cruise. Okay. Hopefully that's put you off enough of casting that thought knots here. Uh, I don't have a thought knot. Oh, oh you have one you in exile. exile. One? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh God! Now I'm Karn flooded, Joe. Ah, that BS. also happens too. <laughs> too much of a good thing. The strip mine was good. Okay, I think this time I am gonna make a creature. Okay. Two two, but I can tap for two, play a mock sapphire. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, not do much of anything else because I'm getting hosed by my own sphere of resistance. So we're gonna go ahead and pass. Yeah, that happens. Uh, sometimes fear can be bad in that regard. All right, so we're gonna draw two. Okay. Top. Top. Another, another land. Didn't take any damage that time. All right, Snapcaster going for time walk or yep. treasure cruise. Time walk. Time walk. Yeah. Yep. Snapcaster time walk with paying <laughs> six mana time walk. <laughs> but that's okay. That is okay. Okay. All right. All right. Turn two. Going with a library activation. Nice. They get to shuffle all, shuffle those cards away. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye, Karn. I will use that ability yeah. to get a oh, I don't have any basics, I don't think. No, but you can shuffle. <laughs> yeah, I'll shuffle. I'll take a peek. Yep, no basics. Okay. Do you play any basics in your deck? No. No. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that a silly question? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Demonic Tutor. Press DT. Let's just go for the throat. Okay. So now we can't cast the... Use the Ancient Tombs at all. <laughs> no. Uh, so I can't go for Thought Knot. Mishra's Workshop doesn't really help me out. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think I have enough to play anything in my hand now that I'm at two. Best thing is either revealing or minusing. I definitely have to minus, I think, and make a token. Yep. 6-6, six, six, and then I guess I might as well play one, two, three. Run out another, another sphere to make my Karn struck bigger. Yep. That's it. Well, not good that you're not reshuffling. Oh no! All right, that's game. Oh man, Joe, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. So there were some really good games in there. So. so some really good games. And you know what? You talking me through how the deck worked was was very helpful. So I, I definitely Thank appreciate you. it. And I think Karn Shops is a pretty a pretty fun deck to just pick up and be introduced to the format with. And I really liked your your bug mid-range deck as well. I'm still playing around with the list. Um, I've got, uh, there's quite a few different variances of the bug mid-range uh, lists that have been floating around. So it's definitely competitive in the format. So Joe, if I wanted to learn more about Vintage, what should I do? Uh, well, for starters, uh, Vintage 101 is a great uh, way to kind of get a feel for understanding the format. 
Mm -hmm. uh, what I try to do is I try to gear my art towards showing how the format looks and what's being played in it. And I really try to share as much information as possible. Uh, and I actually did a whole series of uh, deconstructing decklists uh, down into different categories of cards to kind of give people an understanding of what, how, how the decks are constructed and what kind of cards see play in them uh, okay. so that people can kind of understand, okay, if I want to build Ravager Shops, you know, I want to, this is what I want to look at. It's just been a lot of fun uh, interacting with people. The article, writing the articles every week has just been great. Getting people's input, what they want to see. I've had a lot of set reviews this year because of War of the Spark and Modern Horizons and Core 2020. So I've had a lot of cards to talk about this year. Uh, another good place that you can go look up this kind of information is uh, the Mana Drain. Uh, which is, uh, again, we've talked about that before, ran by Andy Probasco, Brass Man. Uh, he provides a really, really great place to go interact with other vintage players. But the best way to learn, I found that, is to talk to other vintage players who have been playing for a while and learn from them. Uh, I also can't just kind of not mention uh, people like uh, Randy Bueller uh, and Athena Froelich. Mm -hmm. uh, Randy and Athena are behind uh, the Vintage Super League. Uh, which uh, takes place pretty much every year on the Wizards uh, Twitch channel. And uh, that that's fantastic. I love VSL so much. Uh, it's very entertaining, and it also kind of puts Vintage out there for people to see. Must be a lot of fun to watch. It is, yeah. The commentary is always great. Mm -hmm. uh, this last year had uh, Andreas Peterson, uh, a.k.a. Eco Baronin. Uh, he was on there, and he was the winner of that and i was very gracious to be able to get an art an interview with him uh for one of my articles so that was really great well it sounds like a really healthy community with people that care about the format well joe do you stream is there any social media and stuff that people should be aware of to follow you yeah you can reach me on twitter always at volrath xp uh i also do uh stream on occasion uh, i usually on twitter when i'm gonna be streaming uh, but that's on uh, twitch.tv slash Uh It's pretty easy to find me everywhere. Uh, I also do have a Patreon uh, for supporting what I do. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that's also uh, patreon.com slash XP. And just so people know, this is not Joe's first column that he's he's been writing. You also, I understand, write for um, another website, Cardsphere. Yep, I have a column on there called The Eternalist uh, that I write about uh, legacy pretty much specifically now. Again, I really appreciate you coming on the show, showing me how to play some vintage, walking me through Absolutely. the awesomeness that is Karn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, it was, a lot, it was a lot of fun. Hopefully we can do it again soon. And yeah. uh, in the meantime, I'll definitely be watching the Vintage 101 articles as you post them and trying to keep up on this really cool format. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.